Back in my day, we didn't have a Hell Hades optimizer. Back in 2019, we had to do everything by ourselves, and we didn't have a fitting room. How's it going? Somebody asked if I could share my clan boss team, and I figured why not? So it is a bat eater team. Let me just show you guys right here. That's me, uh, BTPD burrito. It is a one key, and this is a one key for all affinities and all levels. So this same team works for Ultra Nightmare, Nightmare, Brutal, of course, Hard, Normal, and Easy. When it comes to doing a one key for Ultra Nightmare, I will let you guys know that sometimes, specifically when I'm going up against Force Affinity, this team will not hit a one key because of negative affinity. A Dracomorph oftentimes won't place a lot of his poisons or do as much damage. Same thing with a Seeker here, even though they are in pretty end game, uh, not end game gear, but they're in pretty nice gear. And then on Deadwood Jedi's website, he has how to build the, the team. But you guys need to know, I didn't actually build this team myself. I actually donated money to Deadwood Jedi for him to build me this team. So I didn't build this team myself, he built this team for me. So just keep that in mind because uh, some of you guys might think I'm a clan boss expert. Again, I'm not a clan boss expert. Clan boss is like my least favorite thing to do. In fact, for, for account takeover streams, I'm just not doing it anymore. I, I don't want to deal with it. I don't like clan boss. So don't ask me for clan boss advice or, or anything because I don't know. I literally just do what you guys do. Look up a YouTube video. But I'm going to do my best to give it to you guys nice, quick, and easy. It's the best 2 to 1 ratio man eater, meaning you're taking 2 turns for every 1 turn that the clan boss is moving or taking turns at. It is full auto, fully affinity friendly. You can press go each day without stress. And now we have quick battles, so you don't have to sit there for 18 minutes to do it. These are the champions that you need. Some of you guys are probably going to ask me, oh, can I use this champion instead of this champion? Okay. I don't know, guys. Again, I'm the same as you. I'm just behind a camera. Two man eaters, obviously, one going. Uh, the speed ranges are your fast man eater, which is 265 to 285, and then your slow man eater, which is 239 to 247. I would not stray away from these speeds. But then again, you could always try and maybe it'll work for you. You never know. Seeker is going from 248 to 254. Painkeeper is going 239 to 247. And your DPS can be pretty much anybody that you want. And you can put them in Relentless. So if you have Acrisia or you have Dracomorph or whoever you want to, like Jintora would be a good one, I think. Whoever you have, Rathalos, maybe. Uh, whoever you have as a DPS champion, you can have them within these speed ranges. If you're right outside of these thresholds, like let's say you're at 260, you could probably glyph it up if you have the glyphs for it. Because what I do oftentimes, sometimes is I, I go into the optimizer and if I see that I can't hit these speeds, I go a little bit lower. And then if I have glyphs, I know, okay, I could probably glyph up like five speed on these pieces of gear and that'll get me within range. So if you can't immediately get somewhere between 265 to 285, consider going a little bit lower to like 260 and then glyphing up, but use the optimizer if you have the optimizer. Optimizer. If you don't have the optimizer, guys, and you're only on mobile. Guys, back in my day, we didn't have, back in my day, we didn't have a Hell Hades optimizer. Back in 2019, we had to do everything by ourselves and we didn't have a fitting room. We had to take notes and write everything down, guys. So if I was able to do this and, and build my dungeon teams and, and whatnot, and Deadwood Jedi was able to do this back in 2019, trust me, you can do this. Or find a CC who does account takeovers, but I'm not doing it. I'm not doing clan boss takeovers anymore. Rangers are actually slightly wider than what is shown above, okay? Double check your speeds in the calculator. He has a calculator right here, clan boss calculator. You can go ahead and check that out there. Painkeeper can run Retribution Mastery if she is at least 7.9. Uh, speed slower than seeker it's always important to read these things these asterisks because i think i did an account takeover for somebody where they wanted me to do their clan boss team and i spent like an hour or even two hours rebuilding the team and it turned out that because i didn't read that it doesn't work against spirit of uh, spirit affinity because the speeds go off because uh, the clan boss on spirited affinity spirit affinity actually places decreased speed the entire thing was was being thrown off so make sure you're actually reading this and not just blindly copying everything this is not something you want to blindly copy unless you either just know exactly what you're looking for or you want to spend two hours struggling the anax variant anax variant is a, an epic champion so i guess if you're going to be using anax you might want to consider these things, but I don't, so we're not going to. 
advanced notes D yeah i don't know what these mean so man eater number one is 265 so he's at 265 and i don't know i actually don't think that any of these other stats matter like you could put 100 percent crit rate on him try to build him with high attack and damage but i actually did that once during a free regear event and the damage was pretty minuscule like the difference in damage like his multipliers are just relatively small and look he's got a base attack of 837 i would not bother focusing on 100 percent crit rate i could be wrong but when i tried it out it didn't it didn't really do anything guys so keep that in mind i think the only thing that matters is having the speeds right i think you do need to have everything booked make sure you have everything booked i do think that if you want to bring somebody who is a debuffer that you don't want to have high accuracy so you want this to be low because for an example man eater places decrease attack and that takes up a slot in the clan boss so if you're going up against the clan boss and you only have 10 debuff slots available you definitely don't want to put decrease attack on an unkillable team because that doesn't really do anything you're unkillable so try to have low accuracy i, I do remember that this does hit relatively hard so we're going to let that go but this right here is important. We're going to have it fully booked. This is what places a block debuffs so that the stun doesn't really mess with us and places the unkillable. I did put Phantom Touch to have a chance to inflict a second instance of bonus damage proportionate to this champion's attack. So I guess if you really wanted to, you could put more attack on him, but that's just, you know, whatever. These are the pieces of gear that I have for him. If you want to go ahead and take a look, compare, especially for something like this, you might be in... The market for that kind of thing so he is our faster man eater so we're, we're focusing a little bit more on speed here when i'm leveling up stuff here i try not to stray away from anything so oftentimes like if like i'm built i'm building a unkillable team for my wife if i see that for an example i roll it up to 12 and you know what I'm, forget that just basically be careful about rolling gear up from 12 to 16 or if you have rear gear from 8 to 12 if it doesn't have speed because if you roll speed you're going to mess up the tune and you might have to change out the piece so just be caution like take caution and be ambivalent about rolling pieces of gear up if you don't know what the next what the next potential substat that's going to pop up might be i hope i explained that correctly if you don't then i'll try to explain it better later if you put it down in the comments these are the masteries again for the first man eater do not blindly copy masteries but actually no you know what in this instance i think you can blindly copy masteries we're basically taking down extra damage extra damage here from bring it down because we're doing more damage against champions who have higher max hp or bosses that have ma higher max hp targets with higher max hp six percent extra damage with our a1s up to ten percent and then more master which is going to be a huge boost to damage because every time we're Proking War Master, I think it's like 60, 70,000 damage extra. Grim Resolve. Uh, Ruthless Ambush doesn't really matter, but I, I have it for some reason. Cycle of Violence, 30% uh, chance to cool down random skill. I, I don't know, but it works. I don't think that's what I would have chosen because you don't want to reset uh, a skill. It could throw things off. But it works, so we're going to leave it. Resistance, uh, decreased damage, Bloodthirst. We're basically taking counterattack masteries here and i think that's the main thing i don't know but that's what's there this is the second man eater here are his pieces of gear he's a little slower so i don't think that we're gonna have to worry too much about getting his speed because 239 240 i think it was is pretty easy to get yeah he's at 239 he's got more attack a little more crit rate than the other one but less crit damage and again the only thing that matters i'm pretty sure is the speed he is fully booked we're taking cruelty to get a little bit of uh, defense destroyed not our what do you call it decreased defense so whenever this champion hits an enemy decreases their defense until the end of the round as you know going up against the clan boss for an unkillable team it's 50 rounds so his defense is going to be decreased every time that man eater hits cruelty on this one i put phantom touch on the other one because you can't have multiple champ or you could but it doesn't make sense to have multiple champions unless you wanted to bring that defense down sooner but i guess you know in the long term of a fight it's better to have phantom touch so we we we're taking this one one percent per hit up to five percent for bosses I think it's up to 20 percent no more than 20 percent is that how it works oh okay if you have a six star blessing yeah but if you have a one star blessing we're only taking up to five percent 
damage taken away. Sorry, belate my last there, but yeah. Make sure you read. These are the masteries. Uh, we took a little bit different. We're taking delay defense and wrath of the slain, but it's essentially the same here with more counterattack. I guess I could take that, but nobody really takes a stun. Dragomorph does have uh, Brimstone. He is in Relentless. This does work with Relentless just because we're keeping up unkillable the entire time. Like, even if Dracomorph takes four turns in a row and his unkillable goes away, it doesn't matter. The reason Relentless works is because our man-eaters are able to keep unkillable up the entire time. So we could take as many turns as we want, but the speed tune will make it so that it doesn't matter. These are his stats. We're basically looking for damage. He's not crit capped. Huh? Again, this is old. I haven't touched. Oh, let me move myself. Again, he's not crit capped. So I don't know. But he's going at 218 speed. So this is working. And that's all that matters. You want to try to put more damage. If you could put 100% crit rate on him, I would definitely do that. Because Dracomorph does place debuffs, you're going to want to have a minimum of, I think, 250 is what you need for Ultra Nightmare. I don't think it goes higher than that. He is fully booked. We're taking Brimstone to have a chance to place Smite. You do need accuracy for this as well. A 15% chance. But the reason why uh, the reason why Dracomorph the reason why Dracomorph is really good is because he brings decreased defense and weakens, so the boss takes even more damage. Plus, he's got four poisons and he has multi hitters, so uh, you know that's pretty nice. He's a good damage dealer. If you're looking for the masteries on Dracomorph. We're taking Giant Slayer this time around because he's got multi-hitters, I guess, with his A2. But uh, you could definitely take War Master, I'm pretty sure. Again, I don't know why these masteries are the way they are, but they are. By the way, what goes here? Anybody know what's going to be here yet? Tentacle worm looking thing? It's not talked about yet. Okay, so Seeker, here are his pieces of gear. I think he's mainly focused on speed as well. So... Um, if you want to go ahead and take a look at that, but his damage is based off of defense. He is in Immortal. I don't know if that plays a role into anything. I do know that when, when I was doing, because I, I did build like a couple of clan boss teams, and usually if I'm worried about the clan boss stunning a certain champion, for example, if you're running clan boss and a champion that isn't supposed to be taking stun takes the stun, for me, whenever I put Lifesteal or Immortal on that champion, that champion usually doesn't get stunned anymore. That usually is not the target for the clan boss because the clan boss will try to stun the champion. Like there's different checks for it, but one of the things that they that the clan boss will check for is if the champion is killable. But if your health is near full, it's more than likely you're not going to receive that stun. That's why I think Immortal will help out. So if you're running into that kind of issue and a, a certain champion on your team is taking a stun that you don't want them to take a stun with, Go ahead and try putting them in Immortal. Stats that I have, we're going at 254 speed. We are crit capped, and we're taking a little bit of uh, crit damage here. So he's doing a bit of damage himself, but basically it's just attack, or basically it's just speed, sorry, excuse me. We want him to be doing the uh, turn meter fill, increase attack on our allies, and then attacking. The, that The provoke doesn't really happen or do anything. It's just the speed. He just need, We just need him for the speed boost, I'm pretty sure. Phantom touch, same reason, bonus damage. Here are the masteries, counter attack, and war master. This is the pain keeper that I use. These are her pieces of gear. She is in immortal too, so I think this was done by design. Not by me, but it was done by design. Actually, no, hold on. Because stone skin wasn't out when Deadwood made this team. I have terrible memory. Yes, I did. I did redo pain keeper because I needed her to work for Iron Twins and for the Phantom Shogun. But those are her pieces of gear. Here are her stats, mainly focusing on 250 speed, and that's pretty much it. What we care about is the decrease the decrease of cooldown skills by one turn. Turn meter fill on our A1, but it is in speed tune, so that you know it is what it is. Phantom touch on her for a little extra damage. And then here are masteries again. We're taking War Master, and um, I guess we don't need too much of that though we don't have all of our masteries for this pain keeper like it's obviously a one key but i guess i can show you guys how how to start it so oh oh the presets oh my gosh i almost went in without the presets okay these are the presets for clan boss opening with the a3 i think that doesn't really matter for dracomorph you kind of just let him do what he wants to do 
But Pain Keeper 2, this is the slow Pain Keeper, the 239 Pain Keeper. We, uh, again, everybody is fully booked. I gotta point that out again. We're, we're booking every everything. It's better to have full books on everybody than to worry about whatever. Um, we're starting off with the A2 here. We're gonna hold off on using the A3 for the first turn for the slow Pain Keeper, or slow Man Eater. Then for, let me move myself here. Then for Man Eater number one, the fast Man Eater, we're gonna actually open with Ancient Blood. We're gonna start off by putting the unkillable Fast Pain Keeper, A3 open, Slow Man Eater. I keep saying Pain Keeper. Slow Man Eater, A2 open, Fast Man Eater, A3 open. Seeker is going to open with his A2, but I think naturally he just does that. And then Pain Keeper, we're going to open with the A3. I think Jedwood Jedi said something about making sure you prioritize um, A2, I think. Let me check that again. Uh, ensure you set Painkeeper to user A2 rather than rely on default. I don't know. It's working fine without it, but if you do this preset, you might want to consider referring to his notes. I'm not going to change it because it's working for me, but that's what you need to know. We're opening with the A3 here. Let's go ahead and run this. I'll run a few rounds and then I'll just end it so you guys can, can verify and check to make sure everything's in alignment if you're trying to run this. Let's go ahead and click start. Move myself over here uh, two times on full auto fast man eater okay i'll move myself over here actually so you guys can see everything fast man eater pro uh, put up the unkillable then the slow man eater use this a2 first and now we're doing the turn meter boost so that everybody is in alignment with what they need to do and yeah this is pretty much it except no more uh no more having to sit here for 17 18 minutes to to do this. I'm so glad they added quick battles. And it looks like we're going fast enough where we don't have to worry about anybody taking a stun. Yeah, there's no there's no worry about it. And then Draco Morph. Uh, oh, there you go. Painkeeper putting everybody's skills down by one. And then Draco Morph, you're going to see that he um, does proc Relentless turns. And that's totally fine. He does bring the decreased defense and the weaken. You see all that damage coming in. Procs from Warmaster and Giant Slayer. The Man Eaters are hitting pretty hard as well. All of all of those poisons coming out right now. Um, tick, and they do quite a bit of damage themselves. Fifty thousand per tick, and it stacks up to only ten debuffs that you can have. That's why it's important you don't want to have decreased attack on, because that's an extra slot for damage. So this is the entire run, I think by round six or boss turn count six. I don't know if because sometimes it says when everything should go into sync. Let me pull this up again to see. Um, yeah, it doesn't say when it should fall into order, but I think it's honestly already in order. If you start out like this, nothing is going to change. I think this as long as you have the gear for it and you have the speeds, I'm pretty sure this is attainable especially nowadays with enchantments and ascensions i don't think this is too hard to do i remember back in the day it was pretty hard to reach these speeds then again i was only in the mid game and what i'm going to do right now because i don't need to hit this boss i don't need to hit ultra nightmare because i already one keyed what i'm going to do is i'm just going to close out the exit the game and i'm not going to waste the key here we're going to reopen this and we'll see that we still have the key Oh, Walking Tomb Dreng's over here. I didn't notice that. Nope. Go back here. We still have our key. But like I showed you guys earlier, I usually hit it in the morning. <laughs> Love my wife. This is my wife's account, by the way. She's two king nightmare. Look at that. Look at her with her clan boss team. I did not hit brutal. So let's go ahead. We're just going to do the quick battle. Same team. Hit it on auto. And we're going to do the one key here as well. But if you're not ready for this, why not try a different clan boss team? Maybe you can do that one and you can start by looking at this one right here.